Hello and welcome to another Build a Soil YouTube episode. Today I'm really excited to have Cooper with me from Sustainable Village and we're gonna be doing a special blue mat install. We've been leading up to this because it's time to transplant soon. We have the four by four bed of the Coots Take and Bake kit that we built and I think it's on its fourth or fifth cycle right now. And we've been hand watering. And one of the things that we know about growing in living soil is that the watering really is one of the most important fundamental principles to get right. And when you do, you have such a range of biology and such a diversity of life that you're able to get the nutrient part of it a lot more accurate and you grow bigger, healthier plants. With an automatic water setup, one of the most important things is setting up a right. And Cooper offered to come out and talk about the new pressure setup. And so we'll discuss who might wanna use this, some of the pros and cons, but most importantly, we're gonna set this setup on a four by four bed, two 30 gallon grassroots living soil pots. We're gonna demonstrate it all and we're gonna discuss all of it today. So Cooper, thanks for coming out, man. Absolutely. Stoked Thanks to have you here. Me. This is the new high flow pump kit. It's been redesigned based on you know customer feedback and just everything we've we've learned over the years. And so we're really excited to get this out. It's we're it's got a mounting bracket here, so we're able to fix everything. And it's just okay. gonna make it a lot easier for the end user to get set up and to have you know flawless operation. Um, so we've you know, we've added a few nice new features some different tubing, diff our new adjustable pressure reducers. And uh, yeah, that allows us to do some really fun things. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. With this, we'll be able to control the blue mat system to be very accurate across the beds instead of based on gravity where it might fluctuate. Yes, well, there's, there's a couple things to that. So the blue mat system is interesting because it requires an always on you know, uh, pressurized water system. So whether that's a gravity line or a pump, it's, it needs the ability to stay pressurized at all times. Unlike a normal irrigation event that's gonna be timed and on for this long, that has a set flow rate, the blue mat system is constantly you know, fading on and off. And so it has interesting pumping requirements. So what we have here is a 3.3 a gallon a minute pump with a pressure switch and then a pressure accumulator tank. And that allows for this pump to get an off cycle, even if this is on full blast running all the time you'll see this still get to cycle on and off because this tank allows it to have the pump to have a rest that gives us constant pressure to the system and um, allows for really really accurate reliable blue mats you know um, operation now if you're at home you may just use a gravity setup we've demonstrated that before it works really well but one of the things that's nice about this is we're trying to offer something that's good for somebody with a busy lifestyle, a family, getaways, vacation, work, whatever it may be that keeps you away from your garden and we wanna have peace of mind. And so when you deploy this system, there's a little upfront investment, but now you can run multiple beds and containers with very accurate pressure. The way we're gonna set it up, instead of running it right to a hose, we're gonna run it on a reservoir. We've got it here and we're gonna set this up today. This is just a brute trash can. We're gonna show you how to put the fittings in. The reason why this is important to me is that I like to account for the potential for everything to go wrong. And so let's say I had a customer come in and they trip on the tube and it rips it out or something, or there's a power outage and I don't know what could go wrong, but I just learned that life has a way of throwing curveballs. The maximum damages, right, are right here. This is how much water we're gonna be having at most versus connecting to a hose line, which if I'm gone for a week, could lead into water damages and problems. If even my hose breaks, right? I have a cheap hose, it, whatever. So we're gonna limit it to this much space. And so if something were to ever go wrong, all that would flood would be this much water, but we get all the benefits of the steady pressure based on this pump setup. So I'm super excited to do it. There's not much more than to just do it and show you because that's what this video is about. So yeah, so here on the table, we've got all the parts and pieces we're gonna need. We've got some tools here. What we're gonna do is drill a hole for the bulkhead fitting into this container, and then we'll set it over where its finished location is gonna be, and we'll mock up the supply end of this from the tank into the pump kit. Okay. And then we'll you know, pressure test and, and make sure there's no leaks. And, and Now, do you get it set up like this out of the box, or how does it come? So we're gonna ship them basically from, from this fitting to this shutoff valve here, just so that we can get it into a box. And then you connect this part and, then, and you screw this part on. Yes, this is our, our, our Y filter. 
This is a hose fitting. So it's fine. So this has a gasket inside mm -hmm. that will seat here. And then same with this is a hose fitting. We'll go into some of these permalock fittings here. Okay. And they're really easy. And we'll show you how to adjust and tighten those. And then this, this rig here will come separate. And so to get started for the day, all we have is a way to put a hole into the trash can. So we've got a drill bit, one inch drill bit. There's many various types. You just wanna have something that's gonna accurately cut a one inch hole, correct? Yes. One inch hole for the bulkhead fitting. And that way we can put it to the bottom of the trash can instead of plumbing the tube straight out the top. This will let gravity prime it instead of yes. having to put a foot, foot, foot switch, you called foot it? Foot valve. Foot valve. Yeah. It makes it easier. And so a one inch bulkhead's all we need, which means all I have to do is cut the poly tubing. We've got a, like a Sharpie just in case we need to mark. This we already had put on the fittings. We just wanted to mention that you do have to put that in there so you're watertight. Got a tape measure if we need to measure anything when we're setting the bed up. And then we'll describe the setup. We've actually got some of the triggers. So these are the blue mat carrots, correct? Yep. Is what we call them. Yeah, yeah. And so we're gonna have one of these in the four x four bed running the whole setup. And then we're gonna do two 20 gallon containers. There's two more. That way they're each independently firing. And for those of you that are brand new, I kind of take it for granted that just blue mats, blue mat, they're awesome. But if you're just learning about this, the reason why this variable pressure and all this stuff's so cool is because the blue mat is very unique in that each container that you set it up in, the plant will drink water from it and it'll activate independently for each plant zone and location where you have a trigger to water it. So you could have a four by four bed and a 20 gallon container all in the same setup and we're not gonna overwater the 20 gallon. It's gonna get exactly what the plants drink and need Meanwhile, the four x four is gonna get exactly what it needs. If this was on a drip system like we set up from the hardware store earlier in our previous seasons, I would have to guesstimate how long to turn the pump on on each individual setup. And I'd, I'd have to go through the volumetric math that I showed you to kind of guess right. This takes all of the guesswork out and it puts you back in the husbandry situation where you're just caring for what it needs and the plant's actually drinking its own water how it wants. And there's a lot of power to that. Yeah, it's a dynamic setup that's gonna run, you know, matching the plant's needs through every phase of its development, which is, yeah, otherwise very hard to calculate and predict. Yes. And so it's, it's a one-of-a-kind setup. We were talking about it, because in, in our environmental protocol, or in our watering protocol, we mentioned that during the plant stretch, the first two weeks of flower, or three weeks, depending on the genetics, they are gonna drink double, triple what they normally do, and this setup You'll just watch it and go, wow, it drank so much more. And then at a certain point, it literally stops. And then it'll keep drinking, but then when you go to full fade at the end, it almost stops drinking. And you can like, you can witness what your plants prefer and see how that matches up with what you've been doing. And to compare that, I'm going to try to keep up hand watering for 15 gallons using the Build-A-Soil Classic method in a four x four tent. And we're gonna have two 15 gallons that match similarly, different plants on this setup and we're going to see if I can even keep up. So it should be a really fun season. Let's get it going. I'll get this set up. Mark that tank. Okay. I'll let you do that stuff. And so here's the thing. You don't have to use a brute trash can. This was just something easily available to all of you at the hardware store. You can buy the can, the lid, they're pretty clean. They're nice and sturdy, can hold the water. And something to mention is I used a five gallon gravity setup last time. And there's some fluctuation there. Also, there's, a, there's just a weight conversion. For me to run a four by four bed, 220 gallons, and if I wanna hook up a whole tent or several beds, I need more water so I can leave for three or four days at a time if I really want to. Which means that I need hundreds, if not thousands of pounds of water, depending on your tank size, to put up in the air. And that turns into kind of a trick of how do you do it? Do you have the space? Do you have a shelf? Do you have pallets? where this just takes all of that. Now, if you wanted, you could have a 275 gallon tote in your garage running off this pressure system and you could have unlimited numbers of beds. Maybe not unlimited, but that's where it beats the gravity and that's why we're doing it here. Um, but you can use any reservoir that you have. Okay. Now what I do is I just kind of go deburred a little bit and then I'll make sure there's no plastic on the inside. There we go. And with the rubber gasket, you don't need to tighten it with a wrench or anything. Hand tight, it's gonna create that nice snugness on the rubber. You don't wanna over crank it. A lot of times people are new to that, they're all, yeah, no leaks, bam, and you'll end up with a leak. So hand tight, nice and snug, right? But hand tight. Make sure this fitting has a O-ring. This is pipe thread here. Okay. So.
Perfect, that's got a quarter yeah, turn. Got... We're gonna run the line into the tent right there. So that looks great. So we've got these elbow fittings that come with the kit. We've got our filter, and then we have our, our hose thread to go onto that valve, and then onto this okay. filter. While you're doing that, I'm gonna find a way to get some electricity over here, and then I'll find a, way to, a better way to permanently run that like behind the tent or whatever I need. Part of what he was telling me is this is gonna give you a really accurate indicator. So I can glance at this from outside my grow at any point in time. And if I see the pressure at where we calibrate it, I know everything's running well. If for some reason I see the pressure drop, that would give me an external indication to say, hey, something's off where I may not have noticed before. And there's also, you can run this at 15 PSI. Today we're gonna to go down to 10 because we're using drip tape that's better at 10 PSI or under. And we're yeah, using drip good. rings that could go up to 15, but there's no reason they all fire well at 10 PSI. So when he gets this going, we're gonna dial the pressure and it's gonna stay there the entire grow, which is different than the gravity. It should be make it much more accurate. And the sensors are just way, they're more predictable and the settings are give you a little bit more wiggle room at pressure. I know this is totally new, but it's at least some illustration here, even if this changes. But one of the things about blue mats is there's a carrot. We'll mention it when we set it up and we'll show you again. It previously, you'd have to dial these carrots in according to the moisture level in the soil, calibrate how much you'd want it to irrigate, and you'd have to set it. And what they realize is that that leaves room for error if you're not a pro at it. And so they found a way to pre-calibrate them and send them directly to us already calibrated. And then they've made marks right on it so you can adjust it yourself using a small Allen key, which makes it highly unlikely to have a problem so they've, they've updated the system and that's what we really want to address. And now you can be very accurate because they've pre-marked it for a few dollar upgrade, already marked, already pressure checked, everything done. So when you get it, it's now plug and play. You don't have to be an expert. And essentially there's different marks that come. You can rotate using an Allen key and it'll set it to the according pressure. This pressure is based on your individual setup. And it may seem like a lot, but when you get your setup and you learn, all you have to know is what you want and then you dial it exactly for your setup and there's, there's clear instructions on how to do it. So I just at least wanted to mention that because a lot of you that have used blue mats in the past know that you have to dial the cap in and you no longer have to do it if you have them pre-calibrate. And so Build a Soil is about to add to our website the pre-calibrated version so that for $3 more, you can get it already set, not have to guess at anything. And I think it's really worth it. It's just a game changer for initial setup and just knowing you know, that you have someone with all, you know, that understands all the variables, preset everything, pre-mark everything, and then yep. those marks can be referenced throughout the, you know, years that you're running those sensors. Um, and whether you were to take them from one system running 10 PSI to another system running 15, or where you, you can still, it. yeah, you accurately know. Because you've already marked it. So even if I need to adjust it, I have accuracy based on that, it makes sense. Okay, so we got the elbow down. It'll just sit out that far. It is what it is. Just gonna, yeah, it's just we have plenty of room. So you can set this up however is easiest in your grow. A lot of people will have you know, a little more room. I could move the bookshelf, but honestly, none of that matters. What matters is that it's set up in a configuration that I can leave it and that I can fill this with water. And if I wanted to, I could set a float valve on here and hook a hose up. You can hook it straight to hose pressure. I'm just gonna use the reservoir for what it is. Occasionally, every day or two, I'll just check in here and I'll fill it up with water. And we're just gonna use filtered water. No RO water, anything's required. The system is really simple to use, so. We're just gonna kinda of play with this till we get it where we need yeah, it. Yeah, that makes sense. Might have to back it out just a little further, but that's all good. And now this swivel connection. Connected? This should be good, yeah. So now we can pressure test this. And then this, we'll just have to, little angle, there we go. Yep. This line right here off this nipple is where we're gonna actually run it into the tent. All the rest is just to get the pressure perfect through this system right into the bed. We'll show you how we set that up in just a second. All right, so we just turned the camera off for a minute while we got a few of the parts out. We're doing it for a four by four bed. We already know that. The grassroots four by four living soil beds, they're my favorite. And the way they, can, they configured them is to be 46 inches, not 48 inches. They could fit inside your grow tent, which is phenomenal. But we wanna take that in consideration He's gonna take some measurements, cut a little bit of the tubing. This orange tubing is their Superflex, they call it. It's my favorite. Like I've done drip stuff before. This like doesn't hurt your hands. It super seals tight. It's really floppy and easy to work with. We're going to set that up. It may not make sense if you've never seen this before. So just follow along with what he does. 
Then we're gonna set up in the bed and you're gonna go, I get it. I see what he's setting up. Jump in, let's do yeah. it. Yeah, we're gonna start by cutting our lengths of Superflex and we're gonna do three sections for each end that are 11 inches long. I'm gonna cut all six pieces at once. This is going to create our manifold for your side. We're just gonna put that together with these T's and okay. elbows to make these two pieces match, right? So what goes in over we're here? We're gonna do that's the elbow on either end, okay. two T's in the middle. And that's gonna give us our four rows of soaker holes. Nice just everything together. Now we need a little section to connect to our tape to eight fittings. And so I'm gonna cut a few two inch sections here. So essentially while he's doing this, this ceramic tip on here and this tube filled with water, it, because it's ceramic, moisture can slowly go through there. And so when the soil gets dry, it starts to pull water out of the tube. That creates vacuum pressure on the valve. The valve releases water, but we don't wanna release water in one spot in a big bed. So he's setting the system up to use drip tape and this tubing system so that when the area where the sensor is in the bed starts to get even slightly drier, it kicks water on, sends it through all these tubes to all the drip tape and evenly waters your entire bed all the way through. And the nice thing about this is it's custom configurable. So you could have a rectangle bed, a square bed, you could have a round, it doesn't matter. You can set it up to get to every square inch according to your needs. Now, one other method that we're gonna use in a minute and I'll show you in these 20 gallons are the rings. So instead of having to set up all of this with the drip tape, like for a four by four bed, you can just connect it right to this ring for our 20 gallon pot and it'll water right around the plant. So there's many ways to use this setup. This has become more popular as of recent. People really like the rings. I've heard nothing but good things about them. So I'm really looking forward to trying these on the 20 gallons. No, 15, sorry. On the 15 gallon, because I'm gonna hand water for the 15s in another area. So that'll be important. So these are what connects to the drip tape. The tube goes on the big end. And then the little end goes to the orange. And so that's what he's setting up right now. So we're ready to install the drip tape. Yeah, it's kind of like Legos. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Actually, you feel like you're building something. And these go on so easy. Yeah, the tubing's great because it doesn't have a memory really. It just will lay right down. Unlike, you know, poly tubing. It's yeah, a little harder to, to work around. So yeah, now we're going to go lay these in the bed and measure and cut our drip tape. Okay, and then last, we'll use this longer piece to connect it back to our whole pump setup that we just showed you how to build. This will actually get the water all the way through the tent to the area we're gonna use it. And then we're gonna tee off of it for our two 15 gallon pots as well along the way. So let's go set this up first and we'll finish it off with the last piece. Okay. So I'm gonna mock this up. So I wanna measure from fitting to fitting. Yeah, we really, we really want a nice clean. Let me go get a bigger pair of scissors for you. Those are some old chickamasas. Yeah, so, yeah. all right, I found some bigger scissors here. All right, so yeah, we're just gonna line it up to that original one and come to the end. And we wanna cut it nice and square. Not at an angle. Yeah, yeah cause then it's gonna go into that tubing, okay. And so this stuff looks flat. When it fills up with water, it fills up like a hose. It turns pressurized into a little tube and then it slowly drips water through all the pores uh, that are in it. It's not like it's gonna drip out of one or two spots. It basically is like a soaker hose, but it takes a certain amount of pressure to release that. So once the system activates and it calls for water, this will look a little bit thicker, kind of sagged like a hose, and it'll drip water into the system. It's really, it's really pretty cool. We can go put these on. Okay. So the trick here is yeah, spin the cuff back. You spin it, so that's forward. We wanna go this way all the way. So I'm gonna get all the way forward. And then you have to fold the tape a certain direction like you're putting Teflon tape on, right? With the, yes. Yeah, so you wanna go like with the grain with what direction when you tighten that? So when I tighten it, I'm gonna go that way around the top. And so what I wanna do is have it not be this way cause that'll cause friction when I rotate. So I want it to be folded over this way, this flap on top. Tab, yeah. So what'll happen is when this, let me open it and see. Yep, it's okay, I'll get it eventually here. So I want to go this way. Tuck that in. Tuck that the way I'm going to spin it to tighten. And, and wiggle it and in. And then make sure it's all the way in, right? 
That's why you want to get it open all the way back, so right? Yeah, with the Sharpie? It's really, yeah, it's really nice to do like, you can kind of do this, get it open, and then get it one of these. Okay. Because at least, the less you crimp this up, the easier it is to go like this. And now, what I tell people, it's always, it needs to be tighter than you think, right? So hand tightening isn't good enough with this tape because of that tab. So okay. I like to use a channel lock and hold the fitting. And then that gives me the extra torque I need to get just a, an extra quarter inch of a turn on that. Okay. And, and that's what you need to keep that from leaking. And it's really important that they don't leak because if they leak on the ends, you'll have wetter ends and the sensors closer to the middle and it won't be able to, it won't know that it's not watering evenly. It just knows what it sees. So you can end up with wetter ends if by not tightening the fittings correctly. So it's really important. So you just kind of... Hold the black part is what I do and then use the, use your hand on the green part. Okay. And then we're going that way, so. Oh yeah, about a See quarter inch there, little, yeah. Yeah, that little extra turn is what's, okay. that's what's necessary. So and then you can get this in there. Perfect, that's a great now trick. You know which way this is going. So we're gonna fold this one this way. I see. And now get over that barb and seat it in there nice. Hand tighten it back, hold it, and get that extra quarter inch of a turn there. Okay. And so now you can see that this is connected all the way in a loop. So it evenly pressures and then waters everywhere the same instead of like having it where it goes to an end and stops. Well, I'll start getting these set up and then we'll go through with the wrench on all of them. You get the supply line out. All right, well, let's get that going. So you can see right here, just going all the way. Okay, we're good. And then I'm gonna pass this into the tent. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure we have enough to get to the base of these two containers, right? So. We'll have two right here. I'm going to put a new light in here. We got lots to talk about, but right here we're going to have two 15 gallon pots also on the blue mat and the whole four by four set set up. So um, right now I've got a heater here that'll eventually come out. I'll pull it out when we do the environmental episode, which is coming up after the transplant. We'll talk about all of that, including the heater, why I have it here, and we'll move it out soon. I'm going to dead end this line, cut this to length and then dead end the line, put on our Zoom out ball valve, turn this off. Okay. Now we can pressure test the system. Pressure test it, get that adjustable pressure reducer, make sure it's set. To do the you want to do pressure. these first or no? No, we can do that after. We'll just okay. cut in. All right, well, I'll get the hose. So we're going to pressure check it before we hook anything up. That way we know it's not leaking and we're sure to have it all done right. I've got filtered water here. I'm just going to fill it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's kill it and let's just fill this up. So we're here now and I didn't fill it up quite full, but I mean, it's right here. So the water is plenty of pressure in there. I'm not gonna use nearly this much water volume for a while. So I just turned the hose off so we can get started quicker. And it's all set up. We did have a small leak right on this where I said you wanna hand tighten it, not overdo it, but that's better than having ruined it. All I had to do is stick my hand in, grab the channel locks and turn it like a quarter inch. Instead of overdoing it, it seated it perfect. We've seen not one drop of water come out now. And so I just dried up the little bit of water that was there and we're sealed, we're ready to go. What's the next step now that we've got it this far? So we wanna purge the air out of this intake side. So first we're gonna open the ball cap there and then this is at the highest point in the system and this is gonna allow us to bleed off the air, you can hear it. Okay, so just barely turn it. Because if you open it, water would shoot out, right? It will eventually shoot out, yeah. And that means all the air is out. Actually because we're above this level. So now we're like, okay, let me get some more water in. Out. Perfect. No, it's fine. That's, that's actually good. good. That's going to be good enough. All we need to do is get water up to the pump and then it'll have, it has enough suction power to get it to going prime itself okay. and everything. We just don't want to have extra air in the system. So now we can plug it in. It's off here. So all we're going to do is pressurize this tank. We are going to end up bleeding some of the water and air out. But for now, I'm just going to get this thing on. You can see the, the water moved to here now. The water moved to here, and now it's stopping right here, and it's pulling pressure in here. Yes. Okay. So once that's pressurized, it should take about a minute, and then it should cut back off. Well, what I want to do now is go bleed the air out. So okay. we have that shutoff valve at the far end. 
We've got these valves. I'm going to open them one at a time and then go to that other far end and bleed out all the air. Okay, cool. So this will be open. Now water's moving through to the pressure gauge. And we're at what, 10? Is that where we want to be? 10-ish? Yes, 10 is what I was shooting for. And then we're going to open this. You can hear the water and then get to that valve. So come on in here. This is the end of the tube. We put that on last. This is the end of the supply line. You can hear the air. So just going to let this run for a second here. Get all the air out the line. And just, yeah, pressure reducer. That's going to be good. And then, yeah, I just want to check that and wait for this thing to cut off now. It should pressurize. Here it goes. We're at 10-ish PSI. It's cut off. There's pressure in the tank, so we're fully ready to go, right? Yeah, we're a little high on that pressure, so... How do you adjust it? I, this is the adjustment knob here, but you don't want to adjust while it's pressurized. So what I want to do is cut this pressure. Open the end a little bit. End over there. And now, the reason why we care is our, our drip tape max should be 10 PSI. So we want to drop that just a little, right? Yep, just Kay. a couple PSI. I'll go open the end real quick. So let me open it. There it goes. Is that good? One more sec. All right, we're there. And then I'm just gonna give this All right, I closed it. a good? couple squeaks. Yeah, just close back off again. Okay. I'm just gonna close it here now, so I know I'm just checking this pressure. Okay. And I loose. I just did this like maybe one full turn around. Okay. So okay, so really one full want. turn is like a psi. But yeah, but that's close enough for what <laughs> yeah, we did yeah, today. Yeah. Okay, so that yeah, makes yeah. sense. It's, it was a decent size adjustment though. And now that's all live. We actually don't need this on as we. Okay. As we do that, but I just now this to here, it's set, set. it's primed. It's I'm gonna put the roll. lid on the can. Let's grab the carrot, let's get it installed. And these are the pre-calibrated sensor tops that we were talking about. So these carrots, what we do is we, they've been soaking. You need to soak them for like 15 minutes and you can see that they have water all the way to the top because we fully submerged them. We're gonna put the sensor on there that runs the whole thing. The sensor with this pressure will pinch the tube closed and not let any water through. And when water drains, it opens and lets water back through. And so this is gonna operate the entire four x four bed right from here on one nine inch sensor. Okay, so these are the ones that have pre-marked, correct? So you can see this bright line on here. That's new, that's for that $3 extra. They go and spend a lot of labor to do this. Each one of these is touched by hand, is marked and then capped. There's a line here, a line here, it's capped. You don't even have to take this off. You put an Allen key through the top and can make perfect adjustments according to the system. So this is a very new development and I think it's gonna make Blue Mat much, much, much easier for the brand new person setting this up to be foolproof. Where in the past, it was kind of known that you might have some challenges to deal with, but it was worth it. Now, they really believe that they've eliminated the challenge, so you can just turn this and adjust the knob. So, pretty cool. I'll let you do the rest. So we're gonna go in and cut in our T's and, and insert our sensors. Okay. So. And do we maybe need this? Or is yeah, it already set? Yeah, we actually don't need that for. Okay. Too easy. We're already where we need to be for a pressurized system. That's gonna be a little tricky to put these together. Oh, you put them together underwater? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, let me go grab a bucket. I'll fill it with water. And the main reason is that to soak these and do several of them, like it's better to attach them underwater so that there's no air released out of the top. I'll be right back. That's probably good, yeah? Sure, that's plenty. So you want every bit of air out. That's why we're fully submerging them. Screw tight. And you want to make sure that that's seated from the cap down to the... Okay. There's no gap. Yeah, and there's no air bubble in there. So when you're at home, you can kind of move it and see, does any air move? There's no air in there whatsoever. So okay. Let's leave that in the, let's leave these okay. in the water. Leave them in. It's important, these little tiny details and you get it all right and the whole system works. And check for air. So oh, you can see there's air. A little bit of air in there. Yep, there's air in there. Yeah, when I was a little quick with. So there could be a little bit of air in the cap. So you reach in the cap and kind of flick some of the air out before you screw it on. Just when you submerge something, it might hold on to a little air. Now we're good. Okay, we're good. All right, so now we can take this bucket. So, so in here we have our supply line. We have it turned off and we'll bleed that little bit of water out. Didn't we just get all the air out of here though? Isn't that a problem that we just let no, it back out? No, in a pressurized system, the air doesn't matter. The air will purge because of the pressure. In a gravity setup, there's not enough pressure to purge the air. Ah. And that's why it's so important to open the valves and bleed the system of air. But in a pressurized system, there's enough pressure. So we're not worried about air bubbles in the same, for the same reasons. Yes, um, the air bubble and the soil sensor is very important where on a pressurized system, the tube is not quite as important. 
No, we were not getting gravity. Remember, we were running a loop yes. to like equalize pressure, and we were worried about air bubbles that just can't clear because yeah. the pressure's so low. But and there's no loop here. This is direct to the system, and it loops in here, and that's because it. It's, because it's pressurized, we can, we can get away with that. Okay, so scissors. Okay, here's your scissors. Still at 62. So for those of you that don't know, the lower the number, the wetter you are. And when we, when we get to like 30, it's basically water falling out of the soil. And when we're up in 60, it's a nice moisture, but a little too wet. And when we get closer to 100 or above, you want things to irrigate. There's lots we can discuss in those cycles, but just so you know what 60 means, it's pretty wet. And so that means that we're in an ideal situation. To show you here, if I were to grab some soil and squeeze, I'm not getting any beating of water, but it's a nice clump. That's what the 60 looks like, and it's really, really nice. If I go wetter, I'm gonna start having water fall out of here. So this is ideal for planting into. You can see once these sensors are wet too, you can see the marks super well. Yeah. So, and so where are we going? If this, we're gonna go right on the blue mark, the way these come. Where, so it lines up with the green on there's, the blue. Yeah, there's a, a, there's a fin here for reference on the front. Yep. And so that's where you're gonna line up. That's up very to. easy. So for the $3 or whatever, then that lines up and now there's already a mark that comes on it. I don't have to like guess. Oh, and if it was a gravity system, you would just adjust open to the red mark. Yep. And now you know you're in the right range for okay. the gravity system. And the reason why the manufacturer that supplies Blue Mat to Sustainable Village doesn't pre-put these marks is because you actually have to calibrate them to do that. So they're taking all the extra labor, calibrating every single one before they send them to us so we can offer that for you. So, so the idea is, is we're gonna have two plants here. We're not gonna have a lot of plants. We're gonna scrog it out. So we're gonna put the sensor kind of in the middle so that it fires off near where the plants are drinking. We don't want it totally far from the plants, but we don't want it right underneath the plant. I'm gonna firm that in just a little bit. Yeah. Just to make sure we're making- And you're leaving a little room out. here just so I can kind of do my yeah, thing so or- You can see it and also the deeper it goes, the harder the dry back because it's gonna wait till the moisture level goes down in that lower level. Yep, now I've so, seen people do a short carrot and a long carrot. Yep. And you're saying that recently it's kind of like, hey, the long carrot is good enough and it works really well by itself. Yeah, the pattern, the, the watering pattern that the nine inch delivers, it kind of waits for a little bit of a dry back before it waters. And it's kind of more of a all on, all off versus the five inch was kind of always a little bit on just fluttering on and yeah. off, fluttering on and off and it's in that top five inches of soil and we would see you know it it drive the roots upwards and when we've switched to the nines we now get a really even root nice. system all the way down the other thing that you may not have noticed that we did and i wasn't sure if i was going to do it i hated the dollies that we had this on just because it let it breathe it was breathing from the bottom up instead of from the top down and to get this right with the setup um, Cooper agreed with me that we should just get rid of that. So we had a whole bunch of us come in here and literally just lift it straight up and then Branson reached under and like literally had to get under there and rip the dolly out and now it's gone. We're on the floor and we're gonna get a lot more even moisture that way. If you wanna use a dolly, like commercial setup, you can build something custom, whatever, but you still wanna have that reservoir underneath to catch the water and to stop it from breathing so much, I think. Totally up to you. A lot of commercial facilities will, will do their own thing based on their style, drainage, everything. That's what we're doing here for us. And of course, it's right on the tent bottom. It's not ideal, but it's also not a problem. It's on concrete. We've got drainage over here. It's in a slow drip system with one reservoir of water that could leak at the worst. So for me, putting it directly on the tent, it's not the end of the world. For the home grower, if you ever have to move this much soil, it's a problem. So make sure you know what you're doing or you might have to bucket it out if you're by yourself or get a whole team of guys to come lift it because that is a lot of weight when it's wet. So, so now, what did you just do? You cut that right there cut, while I was talking yeah. and put a T in and that's it. Yep, and then I went to the, to the manifold and cut in a T. So this is the line. supply line and that's yeah. what you put in on the one end of the carrot. Through the carrot, it has to go from the supply line yeah. to somewhere nearby in this whole system we built. And just, yeah, get it into that manifold. Okay, and so we're not gonna see this activate right now because it's not dry enough. And we'll see, yeah, it shouldn't come on for another 20 M bar or so. You know? Another day or two, depending on the evaporation that's in here. I'm gonna sprinkle some cover crop in here that'll start to drink water, so it will turn on soon. And we're gonna transplant soon. So we'll be documenting this after Cooper leaves, but it was so awesome that he was willing to drive all the way out here, make sure that I get this right, that we get this right. And with these new advancements in the tech, we wanna make sure the growers have all the latest tools available to them, and they don't hear some old method and try that when we've already come past it. So. 
It's super important we're doing this and I'm stoked that you came all the yeah, way out, man. I'm, I'm stoked that you could have This is rad. Me. So now this sensor, we'll see what we're seeing next to this carrot. And then that one I'll probably take out and I'll end up using mm -hmm. in over here on this side just to monitor it. Now, these aren't a must have, but I tell you what, it makes you feel a lot more empowered to know that your system's set up right. You can get a reading. I almost think it's a must have. And so if you're getting involved, it's like, just look at it. It's a little bit of a budget to do this. To, to allow your lifestyle, keep your relationship going, make sure that you're doing fun things with your kids, whatever it is you have going. These systems help improve our lives and that's why we're willing to dedicate time to setting them up. At the end of the day though, you can hand water. Our hopes to show you that this performs better, but I also don't wanna take away from the fact that you don't need any of this. You can totally do it by hand. There are some advantages and that's why we're here together, so. I want to stake tape near the, near the sensor and the, so if you were to move this over here, you're gonna see a big swing in moisture range because it's gonna take a while for the water to migrate over to the sensor. Where, you know, so if we get it pinned and we have like, if you were in, if you had 10 beds and you had some where the tape was over here and some where the tape was over here, you'd be seeing different readings no matter if all the sensors were set properly. Yeah, it's so just to ease moisture. the mind to see the moisture all similar through the beds, you wanna place them the proper distance we're going to put a best practices guide and part of the, the deal for 2024 for Build-A-Soil is instead of one feed chart that kind of got out of hand, we're gonna narrow it down to the Build-A-Soil Classic method, which is water only. We're gonna leave instructions for that with the proper size soil container. Then we're gonna have our watering protocol and environmental protocol and re-amend protocol. If you're choosing blue mats, you're gonna wanna download our blue mat watering protocol. That'll give you all of this easy tips right off, the, right off hand instead of having to memorize this whole video and you can follow it. If you're watering by hand, you're gonna to wanna to follow our classic watering protocol, which gives you ranges to think about when you're hand watering. And then one of the things I wanted to update you on is I've got Duke Diamond soil here. This is the Dominion soil blend. I've got two bags of this and I've got two bags of 3.0. In the next video, we're gonna fill these 15 gallon grassroots living soil pots made in the USA, living soil line, the original. We're gonna load them up over here with soil and I'm gonna calibrate those drip rings and sensors myself without Cooper here because it's on pressure and it's already set up. It's so easy, I don't need them here, it's gonna be easy. But I didn't wanna do it today, I thought about it and I'd have to set the soil up, calibrate it, and then I'm just gonna rip all this back out to transplant. So I will do this when we transplant and I'll show you that when I set up the earth boxes and the tray to grows. So that'll be in the next video or two. And then we gotta transplant. I know you've probably seen the plants all around here. I separated out the keepers already. We'll talk about that in the next episode, go through everything we're doing. We've got to harvest the four by four auto flowers, and then we'll show you the plants again. We'll drop them in their home. We'll dial the environment and we'll call it day one of veg, so to speak, and we'll kick this show off. So let's go pressurize the system. Okay, so what are we doing now? So it's already on to here. Okay. We're just gonna open this back up. And, and it now the system's live. Perfect, so if it starts to get dry in there, it's gonna automatically water through the drip tape and do its whole job, we're running. Yep, as soon as okay. you, you should see it hit something like a 100 M bar before that sensor's gonna turn on and give you the first watering event, that'll drop it down to 50 or 60. Yep. And then you'll see it kind of stabilize there until you start to get into stretch and then you'll see it start to do those yep. drybacks that we talked about. Yeah, and that's important because we're feeding the biology in the soil, that's what helps deliver nutrients. And that's how the plants do this entire process. We're not feeding hydroponic nutrients that are water soluble ions. Because of that, the moisture control is actually a big enabler at driving the speed at which those microbes can do their job. And you wanna have different zones where the microbes can do their job at completely wet and maybe facilitative anaerobic uh, like lactobacillus versus slightly drier where we have all of the normal ones you hear about in a soil system. And we'll talk about that when we inoculate with RootWise, but realistically, the moisture is what drives all that. So now that it's set up, I'm feeling really good about it. I think that's it for the day. I mean, what else do we have to do in here? Not much, right? That's it, yeah. Unless we were to set up the other containers and we already decided we'll do that later. So while I have you here, let me cheat a little bit. I'm gonna set up two more pots. They're 15 gallon. I've got two more sensors already soaked in cap. Can I just leave those in the water until tomorrow when I do it? Okay, I'm gonna leave those in the water. And then all I do is I splice in right there. I go turn off the one quarter turn first. Mm -hmm. Splice into the system uh, two times, Yep. two different spots in there, run it in the container and I'll be able to set it up myself, fire the system back up. Do I need to bleed air or anything? Nope. Okay. I'm going to do that and I will show you guys when I set up the 15 gallon, 
Otherwise, that's everything for the day. I kind of want to wrap it up, and there's a, unless there's anything else that you want to add here. No, just thanks again for having me. Okay. I'm really, uh, really excited to see how we do. Dude, thank you. How do they get in touch with you in case they have questions above and beyond what I can offer? So, for instance, we're all about the synergy. I don't care whether you go to Sustainable Village, come to build a soil, none of that matters. What we want to do is enable you to have the best grow of your life. And if that turns into you going from a home grow to being the head grower somewhere, reach out to them. They'll come set up your entire facility, dial in all the beds and make you look like a pro. They've been doing some recent trials where they show up to a spot with the pre calibrated caps and they literally unload them on the team. They don't have to do any work. They plug and play, he installs the thing and that the side-by-side -side differences of a team that's new with multiple people. Now, I enjoy hand watering and I know what I did, but when you mix two, three, four, five people into guessing what you guys did on each other's shifts, Whoo, the, the dramatic difference in canopy, shape, size, height, yield, everything across the board from getting watering right. This is why the watering protocol of the build a soil way is one of the most important fundamental tenets. People don't get it. They're like, which genetic do I do hydro? Get your environment right, get your watering right, and you're like 99% of the way. Get the genetics right, it's like game over. Get the fundamentals right, that's what it's about. If you have questions about this stuff, about Blue Mat, you can reach out to Sustainable Village. You can drop a question here in this video, we'll look through it. If there's ones that are too challenging for me, we'll link back up and we'll do the FAQ video together on the phone or something. So drop your questions in here, let's get them going. Otherwise, as always, subscribe, like, tell your friends about this channel, it's gonna help them grow better and you're gonna get to, uh, to share some of that with them. And until next time, I'll see you on the next Build a Soil video.